Welcome to this edition of Investment Insights. Today, we have Chief Investment Officer Philip Houghton Brown and Portfolio Manager Robert Kavanagh with us. Welcome. Hi, Ivy. Rob, could you please tell us how did the global financial markets perform in 2019? And what are some factors that impacted returns? 2019 was a very strong year for financial markets, with both global and New Zealand share markets posting stellar returns. There are three key things contributing to this. Firstly, interest rates fell, making it cheaper to borrow, and this supported economic activity. So you may have seen on the news that the Reserve Bank of New Zealand cut the official cash rate to 1%, and other central banks around the world also cut. This low interest rate environment has helped cushion some of the risks over the past year. Secondly, some of the geopolitical risks which have been making headlines around the world finally eased. For example, we saw the Phase 1 trade agreement between US and China, and in the Eurozone, after a number of delays and a fear of disorderly exit, Brexit finally took place in January without too much noise. And thirdly, we saw signs that global growth was starting to stabilise, which is welcome news after it weakened for much of the prior year. And this gave investors confidence and boosted markets. So overall, a positive year, and this transpired into some very strong returns across all funds as you can see below. I just wanted to highlight that these returns are after fees and after taxes, and we like to show them in this way because it better reflects the return that you'll get in your account. Philip, we are now a few months into 2020. What is the current sentiment within the markets? And what is the outlook for the rest of the year? Well, the improvement in confidence we saw since the trade agreement has clearly been shaken by the unfortunate emergence of the coronavirus epidemic. In addition to the significant human cost, this crisis will continue to reduce economic activity until the virus spread has been contained, and there's still considerable uncertainty around how long that will take. The ramifications have quickly become global given how far infections have spread and how connected all our economies are. So we believe financial markets will continue to fluctuate more than usual as news on the virus emerges. Though we still believe that global growth should return to trend levels, helped by the economic stimulus being introduced by governments and central banks. And in the medium term, following on from last year's trades disputes, we may see some changes in the way companies manage their global supply chains. After such a positive year, what global risks are you watching out for? Well, after such a strong run, New Zealand and global share markets are looking more expensive, especially because profits are growing more slowly and returns tend to be lower when valuations are higher. Similarly, with interest rates near record lows, the returns from bonds are also expected to be lower than they have been. And of course, we'll be watching the US presidential election in November to gauge the investment implications, and there may be some market ups and downs from that as the year progresses. So broadly speaking, funds will be hard pressed to match last year's very strong returns, but there will always be investment opportunities for actively managed strategies to take advantage of, and well diversified funds are better placed to navigate the environment. What about close to home? What risks does the New Zealand economy face? While our economy isn't looking too bad, there are two risks to the New Zealand economy that we're keeping a close eye on. Firstly, the coronavirus, which Phil touched on, even if we avoid a breakout in New Zealand, it will still have an economic impact on our dairy, tourism, education and other export related sectors. And those importers that rely on Chinese manufacturing may also struggle, as many Chinese factories are currently closed. And secondly, the drought. While we've been enjoying the sunny weather lately, the lack of rain has meant there's a growing risk of a widespread drought, which could have a material impact on the New Zealand agricultural and economic activity. And to make matters worse, these two risks have the potential to magnify each other, as during a drought, farmers often increase their sheep and beef kill, but the coronavirus has led to reduced demand for these exported meats. So these are two risks that we're watching closely, but it's important to note that these are not our base case, and all portfolios are diversified globally, which helps to mitigate New Zealand-related risks.